And a very good morning to you. It's Friday the 5th of July 2013. A warm welcome along to today's United Kingdom Talk. Already messages. How exciting is this? Already I've got messages here from uh, Terry. Terry who's up to North. He's up to North into Leeds. To Leeds. Well, you're hanging around on those street corners in, in, in Leeds, are you, dear? I got stuck in a car park there once, did I tell you? Did I ever tell you this? Oh, yes. I was doing a job at this place. It's not there anymore. Called Religion. Um, I, I can't remember exactly where it is in, in Leeds. You, you kind of go under this bridge. There's a gay area, right, called... Oh, I can't remember the name. Anyway, there's a pub there called... Um, uh, the Queen's Arms, and back a bit from that was religion. You have to you have to go down these stairs to get to it. Anyway, I was doing this job one Saturday night, and of course Leeds and being a city centre is a nightmare to park. All uh, to go to a city here in the UK, no point in taking a car because it's always a bloody nightmare to par- nightmare to park anywhere at all. Um, and oh, there's a buzzing. What's that buzzing? Wait a minute. Oh, well, let's stop now. I've got, I've got light in front of me. It was buzzing away there. Um, and <clears throat> anyway, so I parked in this car park and, you know, you have to pay on exit or something like that. Paid to go in this car park. I'm going back here a few years now and uh, went and did the job. Anyway, I come out of this place at two o'clock. I'm like, right, I'll see you soon then. So I left and um, uh, I got to the car park and it was all locked up, dear. <laughs> It was all locked up. I walked past pizza places and chip places. All these places were open and bustling with people at about 2.15 in the morning. Got to the car park and it was all locked. Couldn't get in there. And funnily enough, as I, as I was, as I was uh, looking outside for a way in, a policeman came past. I said, excuse me, um, this, is, this is locked up. He said, yeah, it closes, it closes at midnight. I said, well, where, how do you know that? He said, there's a sign up there. And, of course, on the wall, there's a sign, you know. How many people read signs on... We don't, do we? That's why we all get parking tickets, because we don't read the bloody signs. Anyway, so I said, oh, I don't know what to do now. He says, um, he says well, you can't go. He says, just, I'd, I'd go... Um, You'll have to go and sit in the car and have a sleep in the car or something like that. Lower Brigade, that's it. Lower Brigade. Thank you, Terry. Lower Brigade in Leeds. That's a sort of gay area. You know, we have all these strange men and women in pubs. They're all, it's all very strange and mysterious to me, dear. You know, all this, all this stuff. Um, so, uh, I, I actually went back to the place I was working at and said, look, I've got stuck. And the bloke uh, and the manager threw me his keys and said, go and just stay at my house for a few hours. So I went there and then, uh, had a little sleep in this sort of put me up bed type thing. And about half past five, I got up and I walked back to the car park. And uh, they were just opening it as I got there. I said, oh, thank God you're opening this. He said, oh, did you get stuck in here? I said, yeah. He said, oh, it happens all the time, mate. It's a good job you didn't park in the other one. I said, why is that? I said, well, that one closes at Friday. That one closes uh, Saturday night. Doesn't open again till Monday. Ha! I could have been stuck up there for days, dear. No one would have known what was happening. No one cares. Nobody cares. No one would have known what was happening to me, would they? Eh? It's a terrible thing. I could have been in there uh, marooned, marooned in the car, dear. Shocking. Do you know the car park I mean, Terry? Has it happened to you? Have you been locked away in that car park, have you? Let's say good morning also as well as leads to Edinburgh. And Richard's here. Good morning, Richard in Edinburgh. He's up there to get a few breaths of fresh Scottish air, aren't you? Although I don't think you'll get too much of that in Edinburgh if you're right in the city centre. What a wonderful place that is. Last time I went to Edinburgh, um, I took my nephew a couple of years ago on a plane. Why did I take him up here? Because he'd never been on a plane before. He loved it, eventually. <laughs> we got the plane, I think, from... <clears throat> uh, where did we get the plane from? Do you know, I can't remember where, where, where we got the plane from now. Might have been Stansted. I don't think it was Heathrow. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So we got on this plane, and he was all excited. I took him and his mum up there. Neither of them had been on a proper commercial plane before. And we're sitting there, and he's all right. And then... Uh, and, and it was all right until the plane started moving. And then all of a sudden, bless his heart, he got up, He was 14 or 15. He got up from the seat. He said, oh, no, no, I'm going to get off. I said, well, you can't. 
He said, oh, no, oh, no. He said, I'm not going on here. I'm getting off. <laughs> ah, the plane was moving, because you could see the plane moving. And then the uh, uh, cabin attendant come up. Nice, nice boy. And he said, um... Uh, oh, just someone's just told me the calendar. Oh, it does. The calendar needs turning over. Thank you, Richard. I beg your pardon. We have a Barry Manilow calendar behind us. I'm sorry, the Manilow fans will go mad because a lot of them watch the recording of this. They're not with us live. Um, I've got June. I've got the June picture of Barry. Just a minute. I'll have to change that now. One minute now. One minute. Where is it now? There we are. Oh, come on, off you come. So there's the June picture of Barry to to be replaced by the July picture of Barry Manilow. And in this particular picture, boys and girls, those of you that don't watch and just listen, he's got a wonderful blue jacket on and looking happy as he sings to his billions of fans across the universe, boys and girls, of which I am one. Like, just one. There are more than me, dear. More than me. So we now have the July Barry Manilow picture. Thank you for pointing that out to me, Richard. Let me put that back on the wall. One minute. <coughs> there we are. The, the Barry... Hang on a minute. One minute. Barry Manilow calendar. That's it. <sighs> nice picture of Barry in blue there. Now, where was I? Oh, yes. So, uh, Jimmy on the plane. Jimmy's my nephew, who's uh, 60. He, he got very excited the other day. I'll come to that in a minute. Come to that in a minute. So, he's on the plane, and the attendant's, what, what's wrong? I said, oh, he's scared to go on the plane. And the attendant was very, very good, spoken in, like, a, a, a low tone to him. Do you know what I mean? And told him that uh, everything would be all right, this, that, and the other. And very nice indeed. Anyway, he settled down eventually, and he, he, he hid his head. He cl First of all, he closed all the windows. I mean, not, not closed the windows, you know, cl pulled down the shutter on the windows because he didn't want to see out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless his heart. And then he buried his head in his mum's arm. And that was it. I said, well, it's only for 45 minutes. He said, oh, God. Like, 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 like oh, God. <laughs> and the plane took off and eventually, <laughs> eventually he took his hand, uh, head out of his mum's arms. And uh, I think we had a little snack to eat or so. It was a BA um, uh, flight to Edinburgh. And uh, we got there. The plane landed. He got off. On the way back, he was a bit nervous when he first got on there as he was getting on again. He said, oh, God, here we go again. But this time he was a little bit better. So um, I, I gave him his first uh, flight experience, which I'm very pleased about. That's why, that's why I went up Edinburgh, Richard. Thank you for telling me about the calendar. And um, he... he <laughs> Oh, Richard, have you worded that correctly, that sentence there? He said he went on a plane with propellers. Yeah, I've been on one of those. I've been all over the world, dear. I am international. I'm very international, dear. I've been all over the play, over the world, planes with propellers. Uh, Australia, I think if I'm right in saying, I went on a plane with propellers. And it looked just like a, a commercial, it was a Qantas. Looked just like a commercial plane. It, well, well, it was. And also, I've been on small planes. I've flown a plane, Richard. Oh, yes. I had one flying lesson. Just one. Uh, that was from Blackbush Airport here in Berkshire. I had a little flying lesson uh, uh, on, a, on a little Cessna two-seater. Which were all right, but they're very, very rocky, though. Slightest bit of wind and you're pushed. You know, push. But it's a weird thing, because obviously, you know, if, if the wind's pushing you that way, you've got to turn the steering wheel in the opposite direction. And you do it without thinking. You know, I don't know if you drive at all, Richard, but when you're in a car, sometimes uh, when you're on a motorway or something like that. I, I don't think so, Richard. I mean, it's, it's what you wrote there, you see. It's what you wrote on that message. I'm not going to read that out, dear. I really, really not. Um, like when you're in a car on a motorway and you get a, a blast of wind or, or air coming to the side and you, you're kind of automatically, without even thinking about it, steer into it, you know. And you do the same on a little plane. You, you feel it push over like that, you know. You feel, think you're going to go over. And then you push the... the, the uh, you, you turn the steering wheel to that side. But it was a little bit too bumpy for me, so I didn't carry that on. Um, and, uh, 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 and, uh, it was very nice. Very nice. My, uh, my nephew, Jimmy, got, uh, is, is very, very pleased with himself, actually, because I put a, 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 I put a picture of him and 
his mum, that's my sister and me, on my Facebook this week. Um, if you're not on my Facebook, you can join me on there. My username is Chris Reardon UK. All right, Chris Reardon UK. And there's a picture of me that was taken actually last weekend <clears throat> of me looking rather old, I have to say. Thing is, doing the show in front of this camera here, <clears throat> live, those of you that watch, I know not everyone watches, some people just listen, and it's not a high-definition camera. Uh, people say, oh, what? why don't you buy, why don't you spend some of your money and buy a high-definition camera? Well, I don't want it, because I look younger on this than I do in normal pictures. That's the truth of it, because I think the fact that it's not high definition kind of smooths out the lines on one's face. So, if you are watching the show, you will think, oh, who is that young, good-looking bloke who's doing the show? Whereas if you see a picture of me, and I'll tell you where one is in a minute, then you will see it as it really is. Now, I'm, I'm not going to tell everyone where this picture is, OK? So please, come a little bit closer, and I'll whisper. If you go to my Facebook page, OK, facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. Uh, if you don't, you can you can add me as a friend if you want. You don't have to do that because everything I do is 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 in public. OK, there's nothing, nothing secret or hidden. All right. So you can have a look. Facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. The profile pic, you'll see myself and my sister. If you d click on that, I think once or twice, then you'll get the whole pic because it, cause it, for some reason, Facebook cut off my nephew at the end. And on the right is my nephew, Jimmy, one of my nephews, Jimmy, with a little cut on the top of his head. OK, there's my sister trying to strangle him, as usual. And there's me on the left. Now, on me on the left, I'm smiling, as as usual. You know, I'm smiling. But unfortunately, it does show up one or two Tiny ins insignificant lines just below my uh, my eye line. Can you see that there? <clears throat> and me in my in my grey suit. I only actually own one suit, boys and girls. That's all I've got. One 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 suit. And you will see if you ever go through my photos. And whenever you see a family event over the last two or three years, I'll always have that shining silver suit on. Marks of Spencer's two hundred pounds. It's not bad, is it? Because you've got to make things last, dear. Yes. You can't... <laughs> we can't just fanny about, you know, and, and, and buy things every left, right and centre. Anyway, my nephew's quite pleased because I put that picture up there. Let me see if I can find the message now. Just a moment, please. <clears throat> no, I can't find that message. Just a minute. Is that you, Katie? Cat's making a noise. Katie? I don't know what she's doing. Um, someone put a message. I, I, do you know I can't find the message now? Where's that gone? Photos. Hang on. Photos. Uh, photos. Albums. Um, oh, Harry's christening. Is it there? One moment, please. I'm just looking for you now. Anyway, uh, my nephew is uh, likes girls. And someone put a little message on there. Is that it there? I can't find this now. Oh, there, there it is. Hang on, just a minute. Anyway, someone put a message under the under the thing, and it said he was cute. So immediately, one of the other boys that I know, yeah. Uh, so of course, uh, he immediately messaged me with a little photo shot, with a, a screenshot of 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 that picture and the message underneath it saying that is cute. And he says, "Look, Chris, apparently I'm cute." <laughs> I think he was quite chuffed with that. And apparently this person s sent him a private message as well, although I'm not, I haven't been informed as to what's in that actual message. He didn't tell me that bit, but he told his sister that. So there we are. Feel free to send any of my family messages like that you want to. OK. Uh, yes, of course, Richard, this is a family show. I mean, I don't know what goes up on up there in Scotland, dear, but it's a family show here, all right? Um, Terry says he doesn't know the car park I got stuck at. Thought you were going to moan about the one-way system. Well, I haven't got round to that yet. But yes, they do have a one-way system in Leeds, as indeed they do with a lot of places uh, here. Um, we have one in Reading as well. It's called the... The Reading... The, oh, the Reading something system. I can't remember what it's called. Oh, I can't remember now. But that's a one-way system. It's a nightmare. 
You know, you join, join these queues of traffic. It's no better than it was when it was a two-way system of, uh, many years ago, about ten years ago, when I first moved round here. Fortunately, I don't live in Reading. Oh, that's a bit of a hell hole. Just a minute. I've got to do something here. Let me just pull out. That's it. Yeah. Fortunately, I don't live in... I don't really like Reading. It's it's too city for me. I like it with the grass and trees so that in the summertime, um, we can be out there and relax. And summer is here, boys and girls, for the next two weeks. Certainly, if you're in England or Wales or the lower part of Scotland, they are telling us we are going to have a proper summer for at least the next two weeks. There is an area of low pressure... Or is it high pressure? I don't know. I'm not a weatherman. And either an area of low pressure or high pressure that is apparently building, boys and girls. It's apparently building and we're going to be warm. And it's lovely. And it started today. Already out there, the sun is shining and it's unbroken skies. Terry says it's a shame you can't do um, part of the show in the garden. Well, no, not live we can't, but I might record a little bit just for the beginning of next week's show. Perhaps we could do the first ten minutes or so in the garden, because the vegetables are doing very well, dear. Oh, yes. Vegetables are doing very well indeed. I have peas. I thought they were those mange, mange trois. Or mange two things. But they're not, they're peas. Because I went around there the other day, picked off all these, loads of them. There's loads of them. Picked all these things, I think they were mange two. Or mange two. What's it called? Mange, marge two? I don't know. And with those, you're supposed to cook the whole thing, aren't you? Or, or eat it raw, whatever. I just put them in a microwave in a bag and, and do it like that. Uh, but with peas, you share them, and I got these things and I put them down, and I thought, I'm going to just about to cut these things up and put them in a the microwave. And then I thought, these skins are a bit thick. I don't think they are. Anyway, I found a fat one and opened it. And hey, presto, a little row of peas appeared. How wonderful is that? <clears throat> so I've got my own peas growing. The garden's gone mad at the moment. The only thing is, I've planted stuff a little bit close together. So I've got parsnips, carrots, peas, runner beans, onions. There's something else. I can't remember what it is now. Onions. No, maybe that's it. Oh, tomatoes. Oh, and potatoes. And they're all growing really well at the moment. So I'm hoping this year that I succeed, because last year wasn't very good, was it? Everything kept... Everything, everything got either... Um, not mildew. What's that stuff? Uh, tomato blight. I got blight on the tomatoes and the potatoes, and we didn't end up with a lot at all, unfortunately. Um, Terry says, I remember religion. I think I came to see you play, but couldn't get in. Shocking. Do they not know who I am? No, uh, they probably did know who you are, Terry. And that's why you couldn't get in, dear. We, we, it wasn't one of those places where they just let any old person in, dear. Okay? I'm sorry about that. You know, the, the, you know certain places that I work in do have standards. And clearly you didn't fit that standard. All right? Now, there's various ways of you joining the show uh, this morning, boys and girls. You can join in I've, uh, by Skype. If you're watching live, then you can join in live, either send live messages or even uh, talk, to, talk to us on the uh, show. You can phone in or Skype in. My Skype username is, all one word, Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S. R E A R D O N, okay? All one word. Chris Reardon is the Skype in username. Or there's a phone number. Phone numbers 020 8133 6358. Okay? 020. Uh, I'm just going to check that number, is it? 020 8133 6358. That's if you're with us live. How do you know if you're with us live? Well, it's 10 to 11. On Friday, 10 to 11 in the morning, on Friday the 5th of July, 2013. If that's the time where you are now, then you are with us live. And you can join in live either by Skype, username Chris Reardon, or phone number 020... Oh, I can sneeze. <laughs> God's sake. 020... <clears throat> Eight one double three six three five eight. 
You can also join in by email if you're watching or listening to a recording of the show. Then join in by email. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. All right. So uh, at the weekend, last weekend, I went up to my sister's house. It was Harry the baby's christening. Harry is the son of my nephew, Gary, and his lovely wife, Stacy. And they also have a little girl called Evie as well. In fact, um, Evie, I've got to tell you, Evie, is a, she's a lovely little girl. She's just over a year old now. And she's always, always seems to be smiling and happy. So she's not a baby anymore. She is a toddler. I like that word. Toddler. Do you like that word? Toddler. And we love children, boys and girls. I can't bear these people. Oh, oh I don't like kids. Oh, aren't they vile people? Horrible. I don't like kids. Can I just blow my nose just a moment? Excuse me. Yeah, it's, it's a bit of a fog on my nose, isn't it? <laughs> oh, dear. <coughs> I've, I'm having a little bit, a minor bit of problem with hay fever at the moment. Um, I, I'm getting a very itchy eyes, uh, especially the one on the left. I don't know. It might look a bit red this morning. I've been rubbing away at that this morning. I must try to leave it alone. Nan always told me, don't rub your eyes. Don't rub your... Did your Nan used to tell you that? Don't rub your eyes. Stand up straight. You'll get a bad back. And what about that time your mum and nan went, you know, you'd go round home, perhaps from school or something, or you got a bit of dirt on your face. Then she'd lick your finger and rub your face really hard to get rid of the dirt. Oh, no! I didn't like that one, dear. Didn't like that at all. Anyway, so, um, yes, Harry's christening. Uh, a very nice time, or oh, the journey up there, because they live in Woodhall Spa in Lincolnshire. So I finished work on Saturday night about one o'clock. Uh, I came home and uh, dropped off all my uh, uh, work stuff because I've got a lot of equipment. So I bought that indoors, <coughs> locked up, put the alarm on and went to... Uh, and then my mate came round because uh, uh, my best mate was going up there as well. His name's Ron. So he came round. At the moment, he's got a temporary car. Oh, nice car. Alfa Romeo, dear. Racing green. Was it green? No, it wasn't. It was maroon, sort of maroonish red. Lovely car. Very comfortable. They said no temporary car because he's actually got one of those BMWs with a fold down roof, you know, pushes the buttons. Oh, he's so flash, he's right up his own arse. Completely and totally up his own arse, that bloke. Anyway, my best mate. So we've driven up there, up the, um, firstly round the, down the M3, round the M25 and up the A1M. And we got so far up the A1M and road closed. Don't you hate that? So we're talking now about about four o'clock in the morning. I had told my sister we should be there around about 5.15 sort of time. Um, and I, d I don't know why they do it, but quite often, as was the case this time, you find diversion signs and they don't quite go all the way. Do you know what I mean? And we followed a couple of diversion signs here and there. And then we got, I think we got to a roundabout and there was no diversion sign. But where do we go now? I mean, it's obvious that you should carry on and go straight over if there's no sign. Don't go left, don't go right, stick, stick to it. Oh, Richard's going now. Bye-bye, Richard. Richard in Edinburgh is probably going to do Scottish things now. You know, like toss the cabre. Or perhaps wear, uh, uh, while wearing a kilt. You enjoy your Scot Have haggis and chips for lunch or a sausage supper. You'll enjoy that. Make sure it's a vegetarian one, though, Richard. We can't be eating dead animals, dear. Thank you. Um... <clears throat> So we got so far and then we realised we were lost. But the sat-nav was telling us to go back on the A1M, which was, of course, closed. Eventually, we found the road that appeared to be running parallel to the A1M. And it was a much smaller road. The A1M, and it's like three lanes, you know. 
I think that parts of it are four lanes as well. But the three lanes on the A1M. So we found this road on the side and we started going up there. We went, went up there for a few minutes and then it just stopped. <laughs> we, I mean, the road didn't actually end. It, it, it cut, we got to this part of the end uh, of the road and it said no entry. And there's two lines of, 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 um, the, the road is exactly the same size, but it was no entry, and two arrows were pointing towards us, so we had to then turn left. So all these double, dual carriageway coming towards us, they all had to turn right, and we had to turn left. So for oh, gold, you know, what do we do now? So we started going back on ourselves and eventually picked up some more diversion signs. I was convinced that these diversion signs were taking us back towards where we came, like to the, towards the M25, right? But actually, we, we carried on following it for some time. And eventually, um, I got to my sister's and we got to our, my sister's and it was about 45 minutes later than we should normally be there. So I wasn't very pleased about that. But anyway, we went in and um, I didn't stop it to my sister. We were just collecting the keys for my niece's house. Because my niece had kindly let us have her house for, 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 for a couple of days. Because her husband, he works for the RAF, uh, fixing planes and all that sort of thing. And, <clears throat> and um, uh, we got the keys for her house and uh, I had the bed and Ronnie had the sofa downstairs which was rather nice of her i must say and she's got a lovely little house in woodall spa as well they're, they're all up in woodall spa in lincolnshire it's a nice little place um although it's it's busier now than it was when i first went up there they've started kind of expanding it a bit which is a shame yeah you know, it's gone from sort of village it's gone from sort of large village to small town and you, you can see it expanding, which is a shame, but, you know, that's progress, isn't it? So we went up there and um, uh, went straight to bed, actually, and, and, and slept there. Uh, let's see. So Sunday we got up. Um, <clears throat> we got dressed, I think. We went round to my sister's, and then we had the christening at the church. And then while we're standing outside the church, it was a Church of England church, while we're standing outside there, I overheard the vicar talking to my nephew and his wife, saying that um, uh, they couldn't do the hymn this morning, because they had one, one song or one hymn to sing. They couldn't do the hymn this morning as um, the... He, he didn't have... An, it, his batteries were dead or something on, on the... Whatever it was he was going to play the hymns with. The batteries were dead. Oh, Christ. I mean, you've heard, you couldn't make it up, could you, really? The batteries were dead. Um, so he says, we can sing it a cappella. Now, that means a cappella means you sing it without music. I actually hate that. We get some karaoke singers want to do it sometimes. They want to sing without the music. And I, it just doesn't work for me, you know. I, I, I like a bit of background music as well. So... Um, I overheard them saying. So I went over to them and says, have you not got any music today? He says, no, the batteries are good. I said, well, I can play it for you. He said, do you play the organ? I said, well, yeah, I used to play at church. I said, what's the hymn, though? I said, because I can't play everything. I don't read music. I, I, I listen and I play. Or if I know it already, then I can play. He said, it's All Things Bright and Beautiful. I said, which tune? And he went, All Things Bright. I said, that's the one. I can do that for you, dear. So there we are. So I sang. Uh, uh, so so I went up and uh, played. I'm just wondering, actually. One second. Let me have a look at something for you. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to... Let's just see if this is on here. Oh, it's asking me to log in. Don't you hate that? I can never remember login details. Can you? Let's try a few. Let's try a few different passwords. Oh, straight in. How's that? Let's see if this works. <clears throat> Is it on there? No, it's not. On. What a shame. I was going to sing you the whole hymn then. No, it's, you know you know the one, don't you? All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small. 
Yes, that's the one. And uh, it wasn't... It's it, it's a lovely organ. They've got a proper old-fashioned organ. It's not electronic. <clears throat> it's a wind-operated one. And it's the, the keys are mechanical. Which means when you push them down, you have to push them hard. Because as you push a note down, it opens a little valve. Let's the wind through... Uh, into the pipe itself, and that's where the note comes out of. There's no electronic, you know, where it's all done by relays. This is this is mechanical. So very nice indeed, and uh, I managed to, to, to play that, and I got a little clap afterwards as well. Chris Ridden saves the day, once again, boys and girls. But the only thing is, the organ, in certainly in Church of England um, churches, tends to be up. Uh, sort of in the rafters, as it was in this case. And I'm, I'm not good with heights. I kept looking at it, oh, you know, not not happy being up there at all. So I played the organ, uh, we had the christening, in, that was very nice. Took loads of photos afterwards, of course, and uh, videos. There's actually some on my Facebook page, if you want to have a little look at those. It's facebook.com forward slash uh, Chris Reardon UK. On photos, look for the pictures, Harry's christening. <coughs> Harry's christening, and you'll see the various photographs there, as well as the little baby Harry himself. Who was very good without. I didn't hear him moan at all. Do you know, this chair keeps going back. Just a minute. I wonder this chair keeps going back. I think there must be an adjustment on this chair that I've got. An I've got my other chair. I've got time to swap those over. Do you mind if I swap my chairs over? Because this one is, is a bit... This, this one leans back a little bit too far and I can't... Um, I find I keep, I keep falling back like that. There must be an adjustment on the back of that. Oh, what's this here? Hang on. One, one, two. Look, what's this do? One minute. Is it? One minute. Oh, hang on. No, nope, that's not doing anything, is it? What does that do then? Oh, I see. Yes. Hang on. That's it. That's it. There we are. Chair adjusted. Um. <sighs> So we took the photographs and uh, then we went for a little bite to eat at El Paco. Or El Paco. Yeah, L E L P A C O. El Paco. Well, it was just basically um, bits of pizza, you know, the sort of buffet-type food. So we had uh, a meal there that was very nice with all the family. And uh, uh, we were there. And then from there, I think we went back to Tracy's house. We had a little sleep and then went, went over my sister's house and my uh, niece's and, um, uh, uh, and over my nephew and his wife's house to say uh, what a nice time they had. And that was it, really. Uh, Gary and Stacey then went on holiday the next day, which would have been the Monday. Uh, they've gone to Haven Holidays. And they've got a little caravan there uh, that they rented for four days. So they're, And they're due back, I think, this afternoon, on this Friday afternoon. So I'm sure they've had a, a, a wonderful time there. On the uh, Monday... Um, on the Monday... Yeah, I went uh, over to my sister's again, potted about there for a while. We went for a bit of a walk, and then we went to a very nice restaurant in Tattershall. Now, it's a funny name, that is. It's, it's almost Chinese, that name. Tattershall. Tattershall. Isn't it? Tattershall. So I went to Tattershall, and we had a meal at some place there. And I, they had a, a very good vegetarian sort of section there. And I had a honey nut rice roast, rice roast thing. Which was really nice. I mean, I looked at this menu and I thought, oh, shall I stay safe and have, like, the vegetable lasagna? Or something like this. But I pushed, I pushed the boat out, boys and girls, and I tried something different. And I'm not usually very good trying different things. I tend to stick to the same old thing. I mean, here, I eat a lot of veggie burgers or soya things or um, corn stuff. I don't generally try new things, but I tried this this honey roast nuts rice thing, which kind of very large as well. You know, you weren't hungry in this place and very, very reasonable as well. There were five of us, if you include the little boy, because we went with uh, my niece and a little boy, George, who's another smiler. George is a smiler. We like baby George. There was my mate Ron. There was my sister and there was my niece, Tracy. We went into this place. And for all five of us, it came to £65. And I thought that was good. We had uh, a drink each and a starter each and a meal. So about £10 or £11 each. Very reasonable. 
you know. And really nice. Very good service in there. The boy that was coming up, very pleasant. Gave him a fiver tip, I did. Five pounds, dear! God's sake! I've gone mad! I've gone mad! I don't care anymore. Five pounds tip I gave this boy. And um, the, the, it was just, just nice and clean and very pleasant. Wasn't over busy. Wasn't over busy at all. The weather, and so that's what we had there. The weather for the whole weekend was very nice. Really nice. From there, uh, me and Ron added... What was that? I just saw something fly across me then. <laughs> As an insect dropped out of my head or something. Awful. We had a little sleep and then uh, got up again and said our goodbyes and then we came back home on the A1M. Although I forgot my um, tomato plants. My sister's... I'm a, I'm a bit lacking in tomato plants. I don't know what happened. This year, uh, I've got, I, I, a lot of the small plants got eaten by something. I'm not quite sure what. We've had a lot of slugs this year. I keep having to put down the blue pellets, and I don't like putting down blue slug pellets. I always worry <coughs> that the cat's going to eat a mouthful of them and die, but she doesn't. Now, they are supposed to be pet-friendly. Does that mean, when it says pet-friendly stuff on these little blue pellet things does that mean that the cat could eat them and not die or does that mean that they've got something on there to stop the cat eating them because she's always chewing on something the cat she is always chewing she's not as bad as dogs my niece's dog monty the dog he's a bit he's a bit you know needs a bit of shall we say professional help he he eats things yes yeah, socks um I always remember. Oh, are, are you having din? Are you having breakfast or dinner at the moment? I don't know if I should tell you this. Okay, I, I, I'll, I'll tell it in a nice way. I always remember Tracy telling me that. Um, I have to put this in a nice way. Anyway, she she removed a sock from the dog once, and it wasn't out of his mouth. <laughs> he, he he ate a remote control. He was always eating things. He would chase after rabbits. And catch them. Oh, it's awful. But a lovely dog, you know, it loves humans. He's got one of those sad faces. He's a cho chocolate Labrador dog. And they've got sad faces. And you just want to cuddle them, don't you? I mean, I want to cuddle the cat, but she's not having any of it. You know, she don't mind being stroked on her head or under her chin. Or even on her chest. Or even along her body. But she don't like to be picked up and squeezed. And that's what we want to do with our pets, that we want to pick them up and squeeze them and cuddle them and love them. And as she go, meow, meow, meow. And you know, she, and you, you feel the paws trying to get down, can't you? So I didn't get me tomato plants, came home and that's it. So a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful weekend uh, and some nice pictures there as well. I've got loads to do today. Don't forget, you can contact the show. Uh, if you're with us live, it's just coming up to ten past eleven on Friday the 5th of July 2013. If that's the time where you are now, uh, then you can't, that's UK time, then you can join in live by Skype. Skype username, all one word, Chris Reardon. C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. That's the Skype username. There's a phone-in number as well, 020. Eight one double three six three five eight O two O eight one double three six three five eight. And as I say, we are live. If you're watching or listening to a recording, you can join in as well. My email address is Chris at United Kingdom Talk dot co dot UK. Chris at United Kingdom Talk dot co dot UK. Uh, we have got a couple of emails to do, boys and girls, <coughs> which I haven't printed off actually. I meant to bring those, I meant to print those, <coughs> I meant to print, oh, that's, that's not right, is it, just a minute, there it is, I meant to print those off before, uh, before we did the show today, let's just um, do those now, uh, I think there's about three, three, we only got three emails this week, keep your emails coming in boys, we haven't had many emails recently, I think that's because a lot of people are with us live now, my friend, uh, I was talking to yes last night, he lives in London, Jason, um, he was saying, how's the show going? I said, oh, it's going all right, thanks very much. Still at least 25 million listeners. Oh, 25 million people are with, I wish, 25 million people are with us uh, every day watching this show, boys and girls, and listening to the show. Um, <coughs> let's see if we can find these emails. There we are, here's one. 
we got Catalin and Suko. There we are. Here's Suko. One from Suko in New York. And Suko writes, Hi, Chris. Sorry I haven't been in touch lately. It's been ages since you spoke to me, Suko, on the email. Last time we really communicated was, was in New York in February. Oh, let me tell you, boys and girls, New York is not the place to go in February. It is the coldest place on earth. Never again. I tell you that, never again will I go to New York. If New York is a place of extremes, you know, it's really cold. Or in the summer, my God, it's hot there. That is really unpleasant, those two. So you, you need to find a time where it's a little bit more, you know, easy on yourselves. Don't don't go in the middle of summer or in the middle of winter because it's not nice. Um, Suka says, I need to stay away from the cube computer. I used to spend too much time on it. I know what you mean. I, I think I was the same for years. I used to spend hours in this little room on the computer all the time. Not anymore. I come in here to do the work that I've got to do, then I go, then I go out and do something else. But yeah, I know exactly what you mean, Suka. I used to spend hours in front of the computer. What about you? Boys and girls, did you spend? T did you? Did you used to spend time on a computer all the time, and now you don't anymore? Let us know on the email, Chris at UnitedKingdomTalk.co.uk. Um, Suko says, "Haven't listened to your show or any other show in a long time. Just need a break. I promise the first one I listen to will be yours. You always lift your spirits, lift my spirits. We, we do like to try and do that, lift spirits, and if not." Just have a gin and tonic. That'll lift his spirits, my darling. Um, her daughter Jade went to her prom and graduated last weekend. Phew, she says. Glad that's behind us. She looked so gorgeous. I'll attach some pictures. Well, you haven't attached... Oh, you have attached pictures. Hang on a minute. Let's... Uh, shall we have a look at one of those? Let's have a look at her beautiful daughter. Because Suko has the most beautiful daughter you could ever imagine. Um... Let me see if that comes up then. Oh, that's not come up, that picture. Oh, choose the um, picture viewer. Hang on, is that going to work now? Let's try that now. Picture viewer. Oh, come on. Come on, just show... Oh, there she is. But well, I think I might be able to show you that. <clears throat> Let's see if I can. Images. Open file should be that one at the top no it's not going to be that one uh oh one second gang let me just see where this photo's gone open show in folder what folder have you gone in oh i don't know where they've gone there i can't can't get those pictures to come up for some reason Show in folder. Well, where's the damn folder? Ugh. Download. Let's try download again. Open in show in folder. Folder. Newly saved items. Oh, okay. But they're not. For some reason, these are not images. It's um. Can we rename that perhaps? Let's see if that. Oh, that'll work. Right, hang on. My nose is going ten to the dozen as well. It's like it feels all bubbly, you know, because of the, um, because of the uh, hay fever thing. Newly saved items. There she is. Right. Let's just there we are. All right. There's a picture of Jade. She's the second one in on the left. <coughs> Those of you just listening, she's a gorgeous young lady. She's wearing this like white. It looks looks like looks a bit like a wedding dress. And Jade is the second one in on the left. On the left is a, a girl in pink, and Jade is the one in white. And she looks absolutely stunning, as she always has done. Jade has always looked stunning in these pictures. All right. So there's Suko's lovely daughter. And lads, she is unattached. So anyone who fancies taking out Jade for a little date... Then just send in your emails and request that date, Chris, at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Back to the email then. 
Um, she had a magical night at the prom. I'm glad it was a great experience because she's had a really tough year. She's doing Bolsh Bolshoi's Ballet. Is it Bolshoi? Bolshoi's Ballet's Summer Intensive at, in New York City at the Lincoln Center. That must be a, 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 a training thing, I would guess. I pointed Lin Lincoln Center out to you when we were walking back to your hotel. Yes, you, you did indeed. She's very happy there because of the hot Russian boys. They fly in to partner the girls. So she might be getting a Russian boyfriend. Oh, come on, where's the British lads? Come on, get out over to New York. Jade needs a husband. You need to find her one. She understands the whole um, vegetarian thing. Because I'm vegetarian. And um, uh, uh, I remember being at a couple of meals and people would say, Oh, do you eat fish or anything? No. And, she, and Jade would say, No, he doesn't eat fish. It's still alive. Oh, yeah, but it's not meat. No, it's still alive. The whole point of being vegetarian is that you don't eat li living beings. You know. You always get some idiot who comes up and says, well, carrots are living. Carrots, and they turn it round. They take the piss, quite honestly, and it annoys me. I had a little bit of that at the weekend, actually. I did have that at the weekend from someone. They go on, oh, oh, but what about carrots? They're living, and they try and give it all that old crap. And thinking, just go away. You're not funny. You're not funny. Um, we saw Pippin on Broadway a couple of weeks ago. It was next door to Nice Work If You Can Get It, which we saw with you, of course, which you paid for. You paid for me to go and see that, so thank you for that. I thought of that wonderful day and the days that followed. I enjoyed your visit so much. I enjoyed my visit to you. I think my visit to you, Suko, was actually the highlight of my holiday. I went out there to see the Barry Manilow concert, which was fantastic, but I felt a bit alone in that city. I think it's my age as well. Once you're not, dare I say this, once you're not young anymore, I don't think you mix as well as you used to. And I found that very difficult in New York City. Other people would say, oh, you know, they're surprised at that. I found it quite a lonely place, to be honest. So coming out to see Suko was, 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 was just wonderful. You know, eventually, you know, when I, when, I, when I found my way around, I actually turned back once because I got lost on the trains. I thought, oh, but, and I'm not good at getting lost. I get lost, and then I think, for some reason, I think I will never, ever be able to find my way back again. But that's me, you know. I, I, that's why I don't, I don't always like to travel too, well, too far. Hope you and Ron and your family are all well. Are there any new babies? Yes, of course, there's a new baby called Harry now. Harry the baby, who's now being christened. And how's Katie the cat? She's very well. It's actually outside the front the door at the moment. She doesn't come in this office for some reason. She doesn't always come in here. Thank you for that, Suko. Now, we've got two more emails here, if I can just find them. There's one here from um, James. Where are you, James? Let's have a look. James. Hello, James. We were talking out about um, uh, the Alco Pops. A couple of weeks ago. Do you remember Hooch? And I said to you, Hooch was the first Alco pop type drink that uh, I ever had. It's a very sick. I don't drink any alcohol at all anymore. It's been about 25 years since I had a proper drink. I've had the very occasional glass of champagne if I've been out somewhere. I mean, they say it's champagne. Probably not at all. Probably some sparkling wine, but it doesn't matter. I've had the occasional, but I don't, I don't really drink at all. Certainly never, ever drink it. Well, I haven't drunk for over 25 years now. And James says, just to let you know, Hooch, which is the, the lemon alcohol pop, is making a comeback uh, this year after coming off the shelves in 2002. Can you believe that? That hasn't been around for 11 years. It's in a bigger bottle and a new, sharper lemonade taste. As for Guinness, it's supposed to be good for you with the iron in it. Oh, yes, you see people get, oh, I've, you know, the, 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 I don't, uh, the smell of Guinness is just horrible. I don't know how anyone can drink. It must be dry, like drinking tar. Are you a Guinness drinker? Do you like Guinness? Get in contact and tell me what you think about Guinness. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. What do you drink, boys and girls? Do you get really drunk when you're out? Or do you, you know, have perhaps a glass of wine and be done with it? What are your drinking habits? What are your friends' drinking habits? Do they get really drunk? 
let us know chris at united kingdom talk dot co dot uk um I hope you get sorted out with your feet soon, as it's been going on for a while now. Yeah, I've had a problem with my feet now for about three months. Actually, I'm still waiting to hear from the doctor. Uh, He's supposed to be, or he or she is supposed to be contacting me with an appointment for that. And I I went to the doctor (coughs) last Thursday. Was it last Thursday or last Friday? No, it was last Thursday, wasn't it? Yeah, it was last Thursday. And uh, I said to you then, you know, that they're going to contact me. Well, no one's contacted me. So I'll ask them. I've got to go down to the doctor again today for my asthma review. You know, if you've got asthma, I've got loads to do today. Absolutely loads to do today after I finish the show. If you've got asthma, you have to go once a year to the doctor for a review. And I get you to blow into the grey thing. Actually, I haven't done that for a while. Shall I just do that now? <clears throat> and uh, let's see what we get. Usually I get between 5 and 5.50. 500 and 550 on this thing. So hang on, let's let's just have a go at this. You have to take a puff in and blow quickly. Not a puff in as in a bird. You know, a puff in. I like puffins, do you? And penguins. I quite like to have a puff in and a penguin. Just wandering about in the garden with a cat. Anyway, let's have a little puff in this. <sighs> okay, so four, oh, four, seven, five today. Do I need to be standing up doing this? One minute, shall I stand up? I'll stand up. Do you like my shirt today? <sighs> oh, no. 450. <sighs> 450. Oh, so far, far, far. We're about 100 down at the moment, which kind of makes sense because I've been a bit breathless this morning. Not breathless, but, you know, not, not, not quite right. I do notice, actually, when I'm singing hymns at church, then I do tend to run out of breath. So, I mean, that can't be good. I might mention that on my asthma review this afternoon. So, there we are. Um, And I shall ask him about my foot appointment. James says, you wanted examples of insurances costing more. Car insurance for the under-25s can cost more than the car is worth because of the person's age. And that's just for a normal car like a Vauxhall Astra. Yes, uh, very very expensive for young people to insure. I don't know how the hell they they afford it, to be honest. People, some people say, well, it's relative, you know, as time goes on, things get more expensive. No, it was never, it was never that relative. No, I'm sorry, I don't go along with that. When I was uh, a younger person and I had a car and the insurance would come and you would just pay it, you know, you'd save up the money and you'd pay it in one off now people can't afford to do that now so they pay monthly it's always a way of pushing up the price if you ask me it's just a way of pushing up the prices to get people to pay monthly they're crafty bastards these organizations i tell you you know for example if 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 you had to pay take for example mobile phones when i was a boy and my parents paid the bill, the mobile phone bill would come quarterly, every four months. And you could afford to pay whatever the bill was generally. In you know, general terms, you could always afford to pay that bill. Now, you have the option of paying these bills monthly. So overall, if you took the same period in time, like a quarter, you know, say January, February, March, that's a quarter, isn't it? Quarter of a year. That's three months. Now, if you add up those three months together, you come to the total, it's quite a considerable amount, isn't it? But if you pay it monthly, you don't really notice it so much. And that's how these thieving bastards have been able to get all these bills up. In particular, not so much the phones, the insurance companies. I know youngsters that are paying a hundred a hundred and fifty pounds a month a month for their car insurance. That's how they've done it. They they that they introduced 
all these monthly work and don't give me all that crap about oh it's 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 to make it easier for people to pay no it's not that's a load of old bollocks it's not at all it's so they've been able to push the prices up for youngsters i mean don't get me wrong my insurance is is is, is very reasonable it's like 240 pounds for the year but i'm over 50 just just i'm over 50 now I have full no claims and all that business. But youngsters who want to insure even the cheapest of cars are paying one and a half thousand, two thousand pounds a year. A year. Now, if, and the, the, the insurance people know this, if, if they had not bought in these monthly payments and someone had to find two thousand pounds, they wouldn't be driving. End of story. So the crafty gits have bought in these, years ago, you know, many, many years ago, they bought in easy term payments. You pay monthly now, so you can just about afford that £100, £150 a month. That's how they push the prices up. It's the same with the utility companies. To get the cheapest deals, you have to go on monthly. And actually, when you add up those monthly fees, it can be quite considerable. I pay for my gas and electricity together about £50 a month. 50 Okay? That's really cheap in the grand scheme of things because I, um, about five years ago, I invested in solar panels. I've got electric PV solar, pa solar panels and one of the hot water ones. And certainly, for most, certainly over the next two weeks, I will buy no electricity and no hot water. In fact, I will probably turn the meter back. It will turn the meter back. I'm making so much because we have clear skies and sun forecasts over the next uh, few weeks. Uh, even when it's cloudy, it still makes electricity. So my bills are very low, but it's still £50 a month. That's £200 a quarter. It's a lot of money, isn't it? But as I say, not as much as some people. But that's how they managed to do it, all these companies. Years ago, they bought in monthly payments to make it easier for you. Oh, we thank you so much. No, you didn't do it for that at all. You didn't do it for that at all. You did it so that you could push the prices up. That's why they did it. Anyway, back to this uh, email for James after that little moan there. I do like to have a moan now and again. Um, mobile phones insurance is another. It can be a good deal if you have a phone like an iPhone, but it can work out more if you have a cheap mobile phone. I was quite surprised when I found this out myself. I, I, I don't know what phone you've got there, um, uh, James. Do you have an iPhone? I have an iPhone 5. It's downstairs. I haven't brought it up here today because it normally rings in the middle of a show. It's very rude of me to, to chat like that tony martin the farmer who shot the burglar because we were talking about him the other day weren't we do you remember that tony martin he caught a burglar in his house and shot them i can't remember if they died or not in my opinion whether they did or not 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 my problem don't go breaking into people's houses then it's as simple as that of course very illegal to shoot anyone dead whether it be in this country or many others and for that, Tony Martin went to prison. But this boy was on his property, broke into his property, and it wasn't the first time that he'd done it. And he was defending his property. And he was scared. The farmer was scared. Wouldn't you be? Come on. Say you're laying in bed one day. You hear noises. And you suddenly realise there's someone in your house. How would you react? You'd be terrified, wouldn't you? You know. So Tony Martin shot this person. He had, he had a, a, a licensed shotgun, which a lot of farmers have. I think the boy died, I'm not quite sure, but... You know, shouldn't have broken into his bloody house then, should you? 
I don't see why Tony Martin was thrown in prison for that. I really don't. Jane says, Tony Martin, the farmer who shot the burglar. The burglar did die, so he did actually die. Well, you know, I'm not going to feel sorry for him. I'm sorry. Absolutely not going to feel sorry for him. Don't break into people's house. Don't steal from people. People, hard-working people like farmers, bloody hell, they work hard. They work really hard. They get up before dawn and they go to bed long after the sun's gone down. Just to put food on your bloody table. And you go burglar in his house. So you got shot. Well, whatever. More, it's your own fault. Dead now. Well, shouldn't have burgled then, should you? I'm sorry, that's, a, that's how I feel about that. Um, the other month, Tony Martin was burgled again a few months ago. And he didn't shoot them this time. And he was quoted that he didn't shoot them as he didn't want to go to prison again. Well, I shouldn't think he would. I mean, who wants to go to prison? Some people make it out to be a, a, a fairly easy-going thing in prison. I certainly wouldn't want to go there. Yeah, I'm not certainly, certainly not, uh, not about to go around burgling people. Or murdering them so that I can go to prison for an easy life. There's no way I'd want to go to prison. It seems mad that he did it in the first place, as he felt he was protecting... Uh, it seems mad as he did it in the first place, as he felt he was protecting himself and prop property by doing that. And it seems mad that you get less time in prison for being a burglar, even if it's uh, a life of crime for them. I don't understand it. Well, they do. They're in and out. A lot of these people are in and out of prison. They do a burglary, they go to prison, they come out and they do another one. They go to prison, they come out and they do another one. It's too easy. They say it's, like I said to you, you know, it, they say it's too easy to go to prison. It's too easy in prison. But we don't know. We haven't been there. I don't think I'd want to go there just to find out. Um, and on the subject of Amazon, you remember Amazon? I told you. I'll tell you in a minute. Uh, and Amazon have always been very good to me. They seem to be too. I think it's changed the way we shop. And that's from James. Yes, uh, the, the, the Amazon story. I bought a laptop. Uh, I'll just tell you quickly because I've already told this one once. Um, I bought a laptop back in September. It went wrong and uh, sent an email to Amazon. Within a few hours, they sent me an email back telling me to send it back to them a full, full refund. And um, that full refund has now happened, and it's gone back onto my Visa credit card. And wonderful. And I went out and bought a new new laptop um, a couple of weeks ago. A Lenovo. A Lenovo laptop. Let me just throw my nose. <laughs> a Lenovo la laptop, which apparently is an old IBM laptop. And they are very well made. <clears throat> Now, the laptop I broke was a Toshiba, and it broke the the video out socket, actually became loose and didn't work anymore. And on closer inspection, they're really not well attached to the laptops at all. And that was the third Toshiba laptop I've had. The other two have been fine. This one, it, it, I, I don't know if it was screwed onto the motherboard or what but it was certainly very loose and eventually it just went you know didn't didn't work anymore was going to buy another toshiba looked at the toshibas in the shops um but basically that they, they were all the same you could wiggle the little um video out thing you could actually wiggle it so i didn't didn't buy one of those looked around uh, and i ordered a, a lenovo eventually from john lewis and uh, that was fine. That was slightly cheaper than what I paid for the Toshiba as well. Uh, as I say, I've, I've now got the got the got the refund from uh, Amazon. They put it onto my Visa, and that's it. Very, very, very good service from Amazon. And to be honest, I didn't expect it. I didn't expect service like that from an online retailer. It was very, very easy. Very easy indeed. They even send you a label and you put it on and someone comes... Who's it? Who's it? Come and pick the thing up. Yodel. 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 Yeah, Yodel is the company that came and picked up the laptop and they take it away and that's it. And then you get the refund and that's it. All done and dusted. So I ordered this laptop from John Lewis. Uh, better spec than my one. It's got a one terabyte hard drive, 2.4 gig on the uh, processor and... Six gig of memory, which was better, actually a better spec than a Toshiba. Uh, got it through the post, got Windows 8 on it. <clears throat> no, I didn't get it from the post. I had it delivered to Waitrose. 
which is just down the road from me. It's easier to do that because if you buy something from John Lewis, as long as it's not like a settee or a large telly or something like that, you can have it delivered. Well, I suppose you could have a, a large telly put there as well. You can have it delivered to Waitrose and then you can just go in at your convenience and pick it up because we don't have a John Lewis near here, which is fantastic. Love it. Service in John Lewis, I've always said, absolutely fantastic. I now buy all my large items from John Lewis. End of story. I don't even consider going anywhere else because I've had bad experiences from places, you know? Certain um, high street retailers, you know, the ones where you go in and they're not really interested. They haven't got a bloody clue what they're doing. And if you want to take something back, well, that, that is just a nightmare. An absolute nightmare. So I don't buy anything. So, so you know, y you've cut your own throats, really. And there's no, no point in telling me, oh, that was a few years ago, we're much better now. No, you got it wrong then, so I'm not coming back. End of story. I buy everything from John Lewis. Something goes wrong, they just send it back and send you a new one. It's never, ever a problem. Of course, all shops used to be like this. All shops. Perhaps you've got an experience, good or bad, of sending something back. Let us know on the email, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Or indeed, if you're with us live this morning, perhaps you'd like to talk about your good or bad shopping experiences. Then you can do by Skype. Pick up the Skype, give us a call. Skype username, all one word, Chris Reardon. C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. Or phone number. If you're in the UK, I have a local London number. 020 8133 6358. 020 Okay? Or if you just want to send in an email, maybe you're watching a recording of the show. The email address, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Time at the moment, just coming up to 20 to 12. 20 to 12 on Friday, the 5th of July, 2013. So, had it delivered to Waitrose. Picked it up on Sunday morning, actually, just after the church. Came back here, fired it up, and then I thought, oh, Windows 8. <laughs> Oh, God, it's got Windows 8 on it. But I had cheekily been into Curry's, actually, and seen something with a Windows 8. And, of course, you know, you walk in Curry's and the salesman comes straight over. Can I help you? I said, oh, these have got Windows 8. I'm a bit worried about it. He said, well, what don't you know? I said, well, where's the desktop? He said, there, I just click there. And there was the desktop. I said, well, where's the start button? He said, yep, yeah, yeah, you can do that. That's that there. And once I'd been showed those two things, I was away. So this laptop came from Waitrose. It's now sitting at home. I thought, right, let's get this up and running. And within the space of about two and a half hours, I had got the laptop up and running. And all the stuff from my backup laptop, because as well as got a main laptop, I carry around a backup laptop as well, just in case. Which is quite old. It, that's an old Toshiba one. Very well made. It's years old. Nothing wrong with it. So I took the stuff off there, put it on the new one, fired it all up, and got it all working within two and a half hours. So I don't know what all these people are moaning about Windows 8, how bad it is, and how awful it is. You know, I, th I found, and I'm just as guilty of this as other people, you get a bit of new software, you can't work it. Oh, it's crap. No, I can't work that. And it's the same with operating systems. And I've been the same as well when I've changed, when they've moved up the operating system. You know, there are some people who try and stick at what they're using for as long as possible. For example, I know a lot of people still on Windows XP. But at some point, you've got to move on or you're left behind. We'd, none of us want to move on. I didn't want to move on from Windows XP. It worked fine. It did exactly what I wanted it to do. But we are forced to by the wonderful powers that be known as Microsoft. And they move you on. But I, I've, I've got to say, you know, in and, and, and then people, people, that when they move it on and then people can't get used to the new system. They do eventually. We all do eventually. It's like when Facebook changes. None of us like it when they change bloody Facebook, do they? Do we? We hate it. They do something new on the Facebook, and it, it, it's just annoying. 
It's just annoying, and something's changed. And you go on there, and you look, and oh, oh, where's that gone? Oh, 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 oh where's, oh, I don't know where that's gone. And we hate it. But eventually, we get used to it. And we've had a few changes on Facebook. No doubt, if they went back a couple of stages on the Facebook now, we'd look at it and think, oh, I don't, what's this there? Because we, we've forgotten it. Haven't we? And it's the same with the operating systems. People tell you, oh, Windows 8 is crap. No, it's not. You can't work it. That's all it is. You can't work it. The hardest part I found about Windows 8 was actually shutting the computer down. How do you turn it off? There is no off thing. Apart from the button that's actually on the laptop or closing the lid, there doesn't seem to be a way of turning it off. And as a DJ and a karaoke man, uh, the, the on-off button and the closed lid, okay, I disable both those functions. Because some clever arsehole will come along and say, all right, Chris, that's a nice laptop. What does this do? And they close the lid thinking it's going to automatically go to sleep or shut down. Or they push the power button. And they think that's funny. They think that's funny to turn it off while there might be a couple of hundred people being entertained by what you're doing. But it doesn't work on me because I disabled all those functions. But it doesn't seem to be a way of switching the damn thing off. <laughs> so what I did, I did a little search on Google and I found a way to have a an icon on the desktop that allows you to shut it down. You just have to enter a few little details in, and then it, it, you, you get a, a an icon on the home screen. So you double click that, and it shuts down. Mind you, once you double click, there's no going back. You know, it doesn't come up and say, "Are you sure you want to shut down?" or or "OK" or anything like that. You don't get an OK on the menu come up saying what do you want to do. You just double click, and it's and the sequence starts and shut down, and you can't go back. Once you've done that, it shuts down. End of story. You can't stop it. And again, the Dex desktop, well, when you fire it up, it, it fires into this Windows 8 kind of mosaic of squares, which is just awful. I, I don't like it at all. However, you hit the, the, the tile that says desktop, and hey presto, you have the desktop that you've been used to for years and years. So, if you're thinking about getting a Windows 8 computer... Maybe it's time for you to get a new PC or laptop or something like that. And you've been put on, excuse me, and you've been put on, put, put off by the fact that it's Windows 8. Don't worry. It's not as bad as you think. Just go and buy it and you'll be all right. Send me an email when you can't work something and I shall be only too pleased to help you. So that's my, my new Lenovo. Very pleased with it indeed. Working perfectly. Really well built. Because they were built by I, they, they are old IBM designs, apparently. My mate told me that the Chinese bought the IBM uh, factory. Not just the name, they bought the factory, dismantled the factory in, could have been California, certainly somewhere in the US. They dismantled the factory, took the whole factory to China, built it again, and that's what makes the Len Lenovo computers. They are really solidly well made. Go and have a look at one. Because I wasn't going to go near them, because I'd never... Uh, oh, Chinese rubbish. You know, you know you do think that, don't you? No disrespect to the Chinese. You do think, you see, made, made in China, oh, not, not going to buy that. No, not necessarily true. Yes, some of the stuff is rubbish. But then again, some of the stuff is rubbish all over the world. When you start buying these stupid little trinkets and, and, and things like, you know, magic bloody horses or, or you know, uh, 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 Chinese plastic dragons or something like that. It's all crap. But certain stuff is really good. The Lenovo computers, you've only got to look at them. It's really well, solidly made. So I highly recommend. It's all up and running now, and I'm using, I've now been using it for nearly two weeks at work. Works very well. That's, that's my Lenovo computer story there um, for you, James. All right. A couple of messages coming through, boys and girls. Uh, John. John says... What's Katie the cat do it lo like when it's warm like this? All his cat wants to do, Charlie, is sleep. Um, 
Well, she's... Uh, she, she's... Lazy. But then again, she's lazy in the winter. She, she's an old girl now, you know. She's an old lady now. Um, 14 or 15 years old. And she sleeps a lot anyway, and it's no different in the summer. She likes it in the garden. She, she's got a little spot by the tree, and she goes underneath that. Yeah. And she sleeps next to me, as you know, John. Good morning to Wendy, who says, Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Wendy. Oh, John also says he enjoyed the, the start-up music this morning. We have a, a little bit of start-up music while the caption's on saying the show starts at 10.30 and all that. Uh, Terry says, Why didn't you go for an Apple Mac, Chris? Or does Windows suit your needs? Many DJs seem to be using Apple Macs now. Um, I did think about it. I think once you get used to a system, you don't want to change. You understand what I mean? You know, to go from Apple... I, I, I don't know if all the programs that I use for DJing would work on an Apple Mac. For example, my main music program is the uh, Chris Moses radio server player. I DJ from that. I have done for years. It's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant piece of software that is. And that's that's the software I do my DJing from. Would that work on an Apple Mac? Um, I have a couple of devices that are dual sound cards. I don't know if you know anything about those. Um, I use a M Audio Fast Track Pro when I'm doing the karaoke. And when I'm just DJing, I use a Maya M A Y A USB Maya 44 USB plugs in the side of the laptop and I get two lots of uh, outputs would that work with an Apple I, do I don't know that so you'd have to learn it again my mate has got a Mac and I found it, it it's you're kind of moving the mouse over to the side to bring up the menu and all that business, and it, I, 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 it just gets on my nerves. Um, so I think, I think Terry, I, I actually believe that Macs are better than PCs. However, I'm used to PCs; they haven't really let me down. I've only ever had one crash in all those years. One sudden, you know, it stopped, and I think that was due to something that was plugged in the side, a little. Uh, video out thing because I moved that and suddenly the computer crashed so I'm pretty sure it was that um, but I do think you get used to a system and you don't want to change it a little bit like getting used to an operating system although of course I do have the um, the 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 iPhone 5 which I love you know I wouldn't at the moment consider getting an Android phone or anything like that I'm very very happy with the iPhone and the way it works my mate's got an iPad I know a few people with iPads now. I don't know anyone who can d who DJs from an iPad. Do you? <clears throat> also, wouldn't the memory? I mean, you know, for a DJ, I think you just about get 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 away with turning up at a venue with a laptop. It does actually. I mean, you're always doing something, whatever method of playing the music that you've got. You're always doing something, um, but it's 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 looking to see that you're doing something. And if you was to turn up to a venue with an iPad, it would probably look like you weren't doing anything, wouldn't it? So I think that might be going too far. Certainly, I mean, although I suppose you, you must be able to... Can you DJ from an iPad? Do you know anyone that DJs from iPads? Do you? And does it have a dual sound card? You'd have, you'd have to learn it all again. Why would I want to learn everything again when what I've got does the job what I want it to do? But, Terry... Yes, I do think Macs are better than PCs. I think they always have been. And I know a lot of DJs, a lot of artists, people who do video stuff, have gone on and on at me. Oh, get, a, get, an, I, get an iMac next time when you do... It'll make your shows a lot easier. Well, it won't do, because I'd have to learn a new blooming system, wouldn't I? See what I mean? And then would it link in with the other computers in the house? Because I have other PCs that do other things, and it all has to work together. So I, I tend to stick with the Macs. 
Terry says he uses uh, Radio Server Player 2. It's, it's very well built. I may need your help in getting a USB mic to work on my PC. It's getting very annoying. Oh, dear. What have you bought? Why won't it work? I've, I've not got a USB mic. Mine all goes through a separate mixer uh, so that people can hear there. All right? Don't so forget, boys and girls, the email address, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Skype in if you want to. We had no Skypes in this morning. Very disappointed. Always like to have a chat with one or two people. Skype in uh, is Chris Reardon. All one word, Chris Reardon. Good morning to Shania on the Isle of Wight, who says, nice shirt. Thank you, Shania. Yes, I, I've got a few different shirts in the cupboard. I was, to be honest, you know, I got up this morning and walking around the place in a pair of shorts and a um, and an old Lonsdale T-shirt. And I just sat down there. Oh no, I've got to put, put the shirt on for my millions of viewers, dear. Even the listeners know when I'm dressed properly. Although below, a bit you can't see below. I've just got a pair of old shorts on, shall I? I can't lie to you, darling. I'm not sitting here in a suit. I can wear a suit. I've, got, I've only got one suit. My we my silver wedding suits, yeah. <laughs> uh, good morning to Cyber John <clears throat> in Holland, who says hi, Chris. I had to go to Eindhoven last week, but listen to your sh podcast on Dutch Rao services was the best. <laughs> were you, were you, did you have your little earphones on in, on on the, on the train? Did you laugh occasionally while you were listening? And people look at you, they want well, what's he laughing at? They don't know. They don't tell them because it's secret, right? Because there are secret... We used to have secret listeners. People that were listening in secret and all these people around them. You know, they didn't know. It was our little secret. People in offices plugged into the back of their computers, secretly listening away. No one knows. Now and again... The listener lets out a little chuckle. <laughs> People, what, what's he laughing at? Don't tell him. Don't bloody tell him. You know, if they want, if they want to know, give them the URL. Give them UnitedKingdomTalk.co.uk. Give them, that. but don't tell them what they love. Let them find out themselves. People, I ask you. They just want the cream and and take away all the crap, don't they? Um. Cyber John says, some girl sent me a show when you were doing Play Talk. Well, that's a few years ago now, isn't it? That was even better. I've asked her to send me more. Yeah, I, I think the Play Talk, someone had put the Play Talk shows up online somewhere, but I think they've been taken down now, unfortunately. I think someone else owned the um, uh, copyright on those. I'm not sure about that, all right? Oh, hang on a minute. Have I just... I, oh, I got very excited then. I thought it was a load of emails, but it's not. <laughs> it's just various various spam messages, I think. Let me just double-check that for you. There we are. And that's it. Wendy, I hope you... I can't remember Wendy. Have you got a Barry Manilow calendar? Oh, you've turned it over. Because he looks wonderful in his blue jacket this month, don't you think, Wendy? Barry Manilow's blue jacket. OK, uh, another email then, boys and girls. This one's from... A uh, little violinist friend, Kathleen, who had a birthday last week. Now, where's the email? Oh, there it is. Oh, no, hang on. Wrong one. Uh, Kathleen. Oh. Maybe not. I thought there was another one from Kathleen. I've, that's the one I've already read, isn't it? One minute. <coughs> Kathleen, where are you, darling? Sorry about this. I, I generally print these off before I've done the show, but uh, I forgot to do it this morning. Kathleen. No, I think that's the only one. Anyway, Kathleen had a birthday this week, so happy birthday, Kathleen. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Kathleen. Happy birthday to you. All right, darling? I've got loads to do today. I've got my doctor's asthma review, one o'clock this afternoon in about an hour's time. Then I've got to go and pick up my new glasses. Oh, yes, four pairs of glasses are coming, boys and girls. 
Or I'll have my four pairs of glasses. Uh, there's reading ones, normal and sunglasses. And there's driving ones, normal and sunglasses. I should have to put labels on. Otherwise, I'm going to have to put labels on. I will. Otherwise, I won't, I won't know what's what, will I? Put a little D, D on the driving ones or something like that. So I've got to do that. Uh, I've got to go to the, uh, to the bank, put my wages in from last night. Got to post a, 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 a great big fat letter to the solicitor to get with a check. Because uh, I don't know if I've told you before, um, uh, I am a, a landlord. I've, uh, when when mum and dad died, I put my money into properties. And uh, so I'm selling one to, to pay off the mortgages on, on some of the other ones, or at least part of the mortgages on some of the other ones while the interest rates are still low. Because at some point they will go off. Although I gather uh, the new governor of the Bank of England, is he Canadian or American or something like that? I gather he's now said that the interest rates are going to remain the same. Is that right? They're going to remain low for quite some time yet. So, while the opportunity is there to pay off some of these mortgages while it's low, you, you should take it. Because when they go up, oh, bloody hell, you will feel it. You know, so now is the time to chip away at those mortgages. You know, you don't have to send, if you've got a mortgage, you don't have to wait until you've got £10,000 or something like that to send in. You know, you've got a few hundred quid, go down to your building society or whatever it is, or, or, and, and pay it in. You go in there, you say, I'd like to pay £500 of my mortgage, please. And then it just comes off. And then you get the opportunity of either reducing the length of time that you're paying mortgages, perhaps from 12 years to 11 years and 10 months, or you get the rate reduced from, say, £200 a month to perhaps £195 a month, which may not sound a lot, but that's how you do it. You chip away at the mortgage. You have a little bit of money, go in and pay it off or transfer the money. Uh, ring up your building site, your bank first and say, look, I want to pay off some of my mortgage. And you must state you want the money to come off the capital. OK, you don't want it to come off the interest. You want it to go off, come off the capital. So if you've borrowed £10,000, you want that money to come off the £10,000, not off the interest you're paying, because other that doesn't work. Your, your money won't come down, OK? That's what you've got to do, pay it off your interest. So that's what I do. So I've got a, a, a letter, because so, I've sold a flat. It was, only on the, it was only on the market about three days. One of the flats I've got, so I've sold that and um, made a little bit of profit on that, I'm pleased to say. And we'll be using that to pay off the mortgages. There's, no, there's nothing I desire. I don't want to buy anything. My mate says, oh, why don't you buy yourself something? I said, well, there's nothing I want. Well, get a nicer car. There's nothing wrong with my car. But you like Land Rovers. And I said, well, I love Land Rovers. I had three Land Rovers, but they're so dear to run. He said, so? I said, so? Wasting money all the time. No. Not buying a car just because I like it. All you need is a car to get from A to B. You don't need anything flash. Don't need leather. Certainly not leather. I'm not sitting on dead pigs. Thank you, or dead cows. I have material, thank you, in my car. So I've got to do that. Got to ring a bloke about a, a, a karaoke job. So, busy old day for me. Busy old day for me. Now, I think, well, uh, last knock-ins. Anyone else who wants to Skype in this morning, or ring in, or anyone, actually, because no one Skyped or rung this morning. I've, I've spoken to no one this morning. Very disappointing. Skype in name, Chris Reardon. Phone in number 020 8133 6358. OK. Um, Wendy says, I've got a calendar, Chris. My dear friend Anita bought it for me. Did you see the Independence Day celebrations? Barry opened and closed it and it was absolutely fab. No, I didn't. Is there a video of that somewhere, Wendy? Wendy, could you do me a little favour and hunt around for that? Did he do the song... Let Freedom Ring. I love that song. Let Freedom Ring. Because he did Parliament House before, didn't he, Barry Manilow? I remember seeing that and it was fantastic. He had the choir on the stage and he walks through the crowd, didn't he? Barry Manilow. Is there a link to the recent one? Do let us know if there is. Um, I'd appreciate that. Please, Wendy, darling. All right. Uh, I think that's about it on the show today. Yes, we'll leave it there. 
Let me have a look there. Yes. Going to leave it there, boys and girls. And I shall prepare for my day's activities. Lots to do today. Thanks so much for watching and listening, as always. Uh, my email address, once again, if you'd like to join in uh, by email, and I'll read it out on the next show for you, is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk If you fancy a bit of a sing-song and you're in the London area, I'm hosting three karaoke nights this week, uh, all at Belushi's. Um, there's Belushi's in Camden High Street. That's on Sunday night between 8pm and 12 midnight. Free entry all night long there, OK? Once again, between 8pm and midnight on Sunday night at Belushi's Camden. And Belushi's London Bridge... That's Borough High Street, Belushi's London Bridge, is on Mondays and Wednesdays between 10pm and 2am. On Monday nights it's completely free, and on Wednesday nights it's free if you get there before 9.45pm. On those occasions you will need photo ID for the uh, Belushi's in Borough High Street. Thanks so much for watching and listening. Have a lovely week. It's going to be very hot here in the UK. Two weeks minimum of summer we are about to have. I can't wait. See you on the next show. Bye-bye.